Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shogun Mohammed. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sghir Palace in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, senior participants in the 13th Manama Dialogue organized by the International Institute for Strategic Studies in cooperation with the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. His Majesty the King welcomed the guests and their participation in the forum.
when His Majesty delivered the following speech. His Majesty. Set up. Your Highnesses, Excellencies, Distinguished Guests, it's a great pleasure to welcome you all to the Kingdom of Bahrain and to wish you a productive and pleasant time here. For the past 13 years, Bahrain has been proud to host Manama Dialogue, bringing together leading policymakers from the Middle East and beyond. We do so in the belief that ultimately dialogue is the answer to the challenges we face. Individual nations can have the most formidable armed forces and the most impressive intelligence services but it is only through dialogue that we can understand each other better, resolve our differences, and forge the path to lasting security. Today, I would like to thank once again the International Institute of Strategic Studies and all its staff, both in London and Bahrain for facilitating this meeting. I would also like to thank the many leaders and senior security and foreign affairs officials who have come to inform these discussions. We meet at a time when discussions and dialogue are needed more than ever. The Middle East faces challenges which are profound and wide-reaching from the fallout of the conflicts in the Middle East to cyber warfare and piracy to extremism and terrorism. This is a difficult chapter in the history of the Arabian Gulf. We face multiple threats, but I believe there are more than matched by our resolve to overcome them. It is my hope that this year's dialogue helps to lay the foundation for all to come together in a spirit of unity and ever deeper collaboration. This is the place to form a new partnership, to engage in genuine debate, to enrich our understanding of each other. I wish you every success in these discussions. For the sake of peace and prosperity in the Middle East and in the wider world. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. His Majesty exchanged talks with the guests on the importance of the Manama Dialogue and the vital topics it discusses in its sessions, which reflects the conviction that a joint dialogue is the most effective means of maintaining the security and stability of the region.
His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sghir Palace in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, member of the British Conservative Party, Sir Arthur Nicholas Winston Schemes, and a number of Parliament's members on their visit to Bahrain to participate in the 13th Manama Dialogue. His Majesty welcomed Sir Nicholas Soames and his participation in the Manama Dialogue and reviewed the course of Bahraini-British relations. His Majesty affirmed the joint keenness to enhance partnership and develop relations on all levels to serve the joint interests of both countries and their people. His Majesty the King noted the role of the United Kingdom on the global level and its efforts in maintaining regional and global safety and security. Khalifa, King of the Kingdom of Bahrain, Sir Nicholas Soames, Excellencies, distinguished guests. Relations between countries are founded on the personal relations between their peoples. Few demonstrate this better than Sir Nicholas Soames, who has been a close friend and supporter of the Kingdom of Bahrain for 51 years. Sir Nicholas is an outstanding British politician who has been a member of Parliament for 34 years and has held a number of senior appointments, including as Defence Minister and President of the Conservative Middle East Council. In all of these roles, he has done his utmost to foster the bonds of friendship and cooperation between Bahrain and the United Kingdom. In doing so, he follows in the footsteps of his grandfather, the great Winston Churchill, who made such an impact in the Middle East. The Kingdom of Bahrain is proud of his friendship and as a mark of appreciation and respect, is delighted to honor Sir Nicholas with the order of Sheikh Isa first class. Accordingly, it is now my honor to invite His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, King of the Kingdom of Bahrain, to present this prestigious decoration. In appreciation of the efforts of Sir Nicholas Soames, His Majesty the King honored him with the medal of Sheikh Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa, first class. On the occasion, Sir Nicholas Soames delivered the following so speech. I'm grateful to you and greatly honoured and touched to receive this high distinction from you. Our personal friendship began 51 years ago next month at Mons Officer Cadet School under the not always tender care of the great company Sir Major Page of the Grenadier Guards, <laughs> Drill Sergeant Clifford of the Coastal Guards, who has only just retired as the senior doorkeeper of the House of Lords and Sergeant Garden of the Scots Guards, of whom we will say no more. And after that initial baptism of fire, sir, our friendship has lasted over all those eventful years and the great events that you and I have lived through in our time. I have visited Bahrain on many, many occasions and have always received the warmest and most generous welcome from His Highness the late Sheikh Isa bin Salman, your revered father, from you, sir, your Majesty King Hamad bin Isa, and from His Royal Highness Crown Prince Salman bin Hamad, and from many of your ministers and officials. 
I was so fortunate, sir, when I was Minister of State for the Armed Forces in my staunch friendship with Your Majesty uh, in, during the time of Sir John Major's government to receive always, when I was here, your wise advice and counsel on defence matters not only in your own country but in the wider GCC and beyond as we worked on some of the very big issues to which you always demonstrated your great determination, resilience and vision. I have always felt that the United Kingdom is most especially privileged to enjoy such a long-standing, close relationship with Bahrain in almost every area of endeavour, whether it's trade, education, military, security cooperation or cultural exchanges, we are the closest of friends and partners. And what makes our relationship and friendship so really special is the strength of the ties between the people of our nations. We live in each other's countries and in the heart of each other's communities. There can be no better basis for a relationship. And even that is fortified more powerfully by the very close friendship between Your Majesty and our own royal family, especially with Her Majesty the Queen and His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales. These ties between our countries, sir, now stand in its third century. There are not many countries you can say that of. And there remains so much for us to build on and so much to be proud of. Britain is a key partner of Bahrain in trade and financial services. Many Bahrainis come to the United Kingdom to study, work or simply to visit. And in particular, Your Majesty's wonderfully generous support <coughs> for the Royal Navy with the creation of the new support facility at HMS Jaffair. A typically handsome and visionary gesture by Your Majesty and yet further evidence of your always magnificent support for the British Armed Forces and for our country in this region. I hope, sir, you will agree that there could be no surer sign of our commitment to Bahrain's long-term security and of our absolute determination to see our unique friendship continuing to flourish 200 years on. May I once again, Your Majesty, thank you for this most gracious gesture of which I am very proud, which I will always regard as a most signal honour. Thank you. Thank you. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sghir Palace the UK's Defence Minister Gavin Williamson and Minister of State for the Middle East Alistair Burtz on the sidelines of the 13th Manama Dialogue. His Majesty praised the bilateral historic relations and strategic cooperation. He expressed keenness to further enhance bilateral cooperation, especially in the military and defence fields. He hailed the role of the United Kingdom in maintaining security and stability on the regional and international levels. The UK's Defence Minister expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty's efforts to provide facilitations for the British Navy in Bahrain, highlighting the strong ties between the two countries. The meeting also included discussions of topics regarding regional and international developments, in addition to a number of topics of mutual concern. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received today at Sghir Palace the Foreign Minister of Japan, Taro Kono, on the sidelines of the 13th Manama Dialogue. His Majesty praised the advancement of the bilateral relations and the continuous progress in all fields, thanks to the keenness of the leadership of both countries. His Majesty then discussed the bilateral friendly relations and ways to further enhance cooperation in the economic, commercial and investment fields to benefit both countries. His Majesty and the Japanese Foreign Minister also discussed the main topics introduced in the Manama Dialogue in addition to recent regional and international developments. His Majesty praised the pioneering role of Japan and its contributions in serving the security and stability on an international level. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Al Safiya Palace yesterday evening Commander of the U.S. Central Command General Joseph Votel, currently visiting Bahrain to participate in the Manama Dialogue. His Majesty the King welcomed the Commander of the U.S. Central Command and expressed his pride in the strong historic relations linking the Kingdom of Bahrain and the United States in all fields, especially in the field of defense and military cooperation. His Majesty the King underlined the common interest in developing friendly relations and cooperation between the two friendly countries. His Majesty the King noted the role played by the U.S. administration in maintaining international peace and security. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman al-Khalifa, departed today on a private visit. 
His Royal Highness was seen off by deputy prime ministers, the southern governor and a number of ministers and the officials in the kingdom. On behalf of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, today welcome delegates from across the world to Bahrain's 13th Manama Dialogue Security Conference, held in partnership with the IISS. Bahrain has led the region's foremost security conference for over 10 years, and the conference continues to provide a unique platform for multilateral engagements and private diplomacy in resolving conflict. During the event, the Deputy Prime Minister noted that the Manama Dialogue provides an important forum to exchange views and develop solutions to complex, unprecedented regional security challenges. He highlighted the Kingdom's commitment to providing strategic and logistical support to international alliances combating terrorism in the region, including active participation in both the campaign against ISIL and the Saudi-led coalition to restore stability and security in Yemen. During the conference, the corresponding director of the IISS, John Jenkins, delivered the opening address, which detailed the complexity of issues currently facing the region. Jenkins highlighted the need for collective action to counter radical groups, which represents the biggest challenge of the time and the dominant threat to the social conclusion across the region. Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak stressed that under the Comprehensive Development Program, led by His Majesty King Hamad, Bahrain continues to achieve significant sustainable development and growth across key sectors in this regard. He noted the crucial role played by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince in ensuring His Majesty's Development Program continues to meet the aspirations of the Bahraini citizens. The Deputy Prime Minister concluded by expressing confidence that the 2017 Manama Dialogue will help identify new and effective solutions to regional conflicts and the threat posed by terrorism and extremism. He went on to recognize the role that the IISS's corresponding director and team play in ensuring that the Manama Dialogue remains one of the region's most successful security forums.
the National Guard Commander, Lieutenant General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa, received today Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, General Zbir Mahmoud Hayat, on the sidelines of the 13th Manama Dialogue. The National Guard Commander welcomed the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Pakistan and praised the bilateral brotherly relations and the cooperation in all fields. He also discussed with his guests a number of topics of mutual concern. He praised the patriotic stances of Pakistan towards Bahrain and its support to its security and military measures against foreign interferences and terrorist acts. Lieutenant General Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa Al Khalifa expressed keenness of the kingdom to further enhance cooperation and exchange expertise with Pakistan. He hailed the success and progress of the military institutions of Pakistan. General Zbir Mahmoud Hayat praised the advanced bilateral relations and cooperation in all fields and expressed his country's keenness to further enhance cooperation with the National Guard as well as military institutions in the kingdom. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, affirmed that the security and stability of the region faces many serious challenges, particularly the spread of terrorists, whether supported by some countries or sponsored by violent non governmental organizations in the region. And in, his, in his address to the Manama Dialogue at its 13th ses session, the minister added that the coup militias of the Republic of Yemen have refused to play any positive role in building Yemen, have turned against the legitimate regime, and have sought to establish a terrorist state subject to the Islamic Republic of Iran, which must not be allowed. He also praised the important role of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in providing and facilitating assistance to the affected areas through the Kingdom of Salman Center for Humanitarian Aid and Relief. The minister referred to Hezbollah's terrorist activities in the Lebanese Republic as it provides a model for the consequences of a terrorist organization taking control of the political decision where it does not respect Lebanon's laws and customs and does not abide by the will of the Lebanese people but receives its orders from Iran, which he said was the main reason for the continuation of the Syrian crisis. He said that the decisions taken by the Kingdom of Bahrain, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and the Arab Republic of Egypt on the boycott of Qatar came after decades of the country's practices that targeted the security and stability of their countries as well as attempts to undermine national security and social peace in the Kingdom of Bahrain and overthrow the regime with an assistance of its associated parties in addition to financing terrorist operations in other countries. The minister stressed that the option has always been for brotherly and friendly dialogue and close cooperation between the members of the Gulf Cooperation Council in order to preserve the unity of the GCC states, but without success and without stopping these terrorist practices and hostile and terrorist policies and practices. He said that the four countries are ready to re-establish their relations with Qatar, provided that Qatar abides by the agreements it has already signed and stops its support for terrorism, undermining their countries and interfering in the international affairs of other states. Sheikh Khalid pointed out that the strategic alliance with the United States and the United Kingdom is vital to ensure the security and stability of the Arabian Gulf and its vital importance for international peace and security. He stressed that mutual respect for the sovereignty of states and the commitment of all countries not to interfere in internal affairs are the most important steps towards the resumption of security and stability of the region. He reiterated the position of the Kingdom of Bahrain in support of the efforts of the Iraqi government headed by Dr. Haider al-Abadi toward the occupied areas of the remnants of terrorists and ensure the return of the population of Mosul to their homes. The minister criticized the role played by Iran, stressed that it is one of the most countries that undermine the security and in the, re in the region and destabilize governments and support terrorist militias to implement its own agenda as it can at any moment move its agents to carry out terrorist operations which can be seen clearly in Yemen, in Syria as well as in the kingdom through the Iranian sabotage and terrorism. Sheikh Khalid stressed that the great difference between the Iranian people, who have a long history and a rich culture, and the regime of the Islamic Republic of Iran, which is hindering Iran's progress, is the attempt to extort Iran's revolution and not abide by the accepted principles and international laws, instead of joining the ranks of responsible countries in the international community to benefit the region as a whole. The minister said that the decision to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel would threaten the peace process in the Middle East and disrupt all initiatives and negotiations to reach the final solution. He added that East Jerusalem is an occupied territory whose occupation must be ended and that modern countries cannot be built on the basis of old claims. In this case, he said, we will face several demands, one followed by another, and we will never achieve lasting peace in the region. He stressed the importance of preserving the pivotal role of the United States of America to reach a two-state solution based on the resolutions of international legitimacy and the Arab Peace Initiative. 
Sheikh Khalid stressed that the only representative of the peoples is the state and not the terrorist organizations, and that the region will not achieve permanent stability until after the elimination of these groups and terrorist militias. The IIS Esmenama Dialogue started off today with a workshop on cybersecurity, then a very vivid televised debate stabilizing the Middle East and fighting terrorism worldwide. More on the support with Sara Lebrek. The Manama Dialogue started off their sessions on the safest political platform, the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Dialogue, which is organized by the IISS organization, is meant to provide a stage for open political discussions and the brainstorm of solutions to the issues that are hindering the progress and development of the region. Tourism is a sickness that grows in an environment that feeds it. It is in the places that are not under any control or not have any government body that can face tourism from a security point of view or from the point of view of ideology or media. The IISS Manama Dialogue 2017 kicked off today with a number of delegates from regional and international entities. The main points to be addressed during the three-day annual event are the international political and military responses to extremism in the region, as well as cybersecurity issues in the era of technology and social media. Also, the protective mechanisms for worldwide security by shedding the light on the evolving partnerships in the Middle East. And the latest point added to the agenda is in light of U.S. President Donald Trump moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem. We are very concerned, of course, about the reaction to uh, the decision by President Trump to recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Um, my Chancellor has stated very clearly that we believe in a two-state solution and first that has to be negotiated and the status of Jerusalem should be decided at the very end between the two states that are to be formed. So we really think um, the recognition of Jerusalem at this stage is premature and will lead to a lot of trouble in the region. We have issued a statement indicating how Egypt had been actually contrary to this move and not even understanding why would it be done and, and what would it add to anything. So accordingly we do have our big reservations, if not actually condemnation of this, of this step and of its impact on the area and on the peace process and how are we to resume the peace process if we, if we decided to give up negotiations as the means of deciding the fate of, uh, of uh, Jerusalem. So accordingly, if we are condemning this, we are sharing the feeling of all, I believe, most of the countries, if not all of them, that this is actually is affecting the legitimacy of the, of the, of, of the United Nations, the legitimacy of the multilateral, because there are a lot of, a lot of resolutions that had been put aside and had been totally ignored when this decision has been taken. This year's Manama Dialogue had an addition to the agenda. The addition was the situation in Jerusalem, where Donald Trump has approved Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Now, what the solution is to this problem and the solution to the Middle East peace process, we will see. This is Sarah Break reporting for Bahrain International. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of Iraq, Dr. Ibrahim Al Jafari, on the sidelines of the Manama Dialogue at its 13th session. Sheikh Khalid expressed pride in their brotherly relations between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of Iraq, stressing the keenness of the Kingdom of Bahrain to further develop these relations in all fields to serve the interests of the two countries. He said that the joint committee between the two countries, which will hold a meeting soon, will have an important role in achieving these goals. He praised the efforts of the Iraqi government, headed by Dr. Haider al-Abadi, in the fight against terrorism and the successes achieved by the Iraqi forces in confronting the terrorist organization, stressing the position of the Kingdom of Bahrain in supporting the unity and sovereignty of Iraq over all its territory and all efforts to eliminate the terrorist organizations that threaten the security and stability of the world. For his part, Dr. al-Ja'fari expressed the appreciation of the Republic of Iraq for the positions of the Kingdom of Bahrain in support of the stability of Iraq, wishing the Kingdom further 
progress and prosperity. The Foreign Affairs Minister also met with the head of the Department of Foreign Relations of Kurdistan, Regional Government, Falah Mustafa Bakr. The Foreign Affairs Minister expressed pride in the Kurdistan region of Iraq as an important component of the Iraqi people and its prominent role of the progress of Iraq, stressing the need to maintain the country's unity, cohesion and solidarity among all its people, as well as commitment to dialogue between all parties and all signed agreements and provisions of the Constitution of the Republic of Iraq to ensure the interests of all the components of its people. For his part, the head of the Department of Foreign Relations of Kurdistan Regional Government expressed pride in the meeting of the Foreign Affairs with his appreciation for the role of the Kingdom of Bahrain in enhancing the security and stability of the region. During a meeting between Foreign Minister Sheikh Khalid and Japan's Minister of Foreign Affairs Taro Kono, the two sides reviewed the course of friendly relations between the two countries and ways of developing them at all levels. They also discussed regional and international developments and means of developing joint cooperation for the benefit of the two countries and their peoples. During the meeting, they stressed the importance of continuous communication and exchange of visits between officials to enhance joint coordination on various issues and contribute to supporting efforts to enhance security and stability in the region. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also met with the Minister of State for External Affairs of the Republic of India, MJ Akbar. Sheikh Khalid praised the continuous progress made by the Kingdom of Bahrain and the Republic of India in light of the diverse opportunities and desire of the two friendly countries, as well as the role played by the Indian community in the development witnessed by Bahrain in all sectors, a role which is highly respected and appreciated. He also noted the important role played by India at the global level. For his part, Mr. M.J. Akbar affirmed the keenness of India and its continuous aspiration to enhance friendly relations and strengthen cooperation with Bahrain at all levels, wishing the kingdom progress and prosperity. Sheikh Khalid also met with the Director of Government and International Affairs at the American Jewish Committee, Jason Isaacson, and reviewed the course of development of historical relations and strategic partnership between Bahrain and the United States and the means to bolster ties for the benefit of both countries and peoples. A number of regional and international issues of common interest were also addressed.